Hey guys, it's Brant and I'm back with another KISS album review, but I'm also going to be doing a album slash video review and reaction because I've come around to finally got around to sitting down and watching uh, KISS Symphony. And I did watch this a little bit. I've been listening to it quite a bit over the last few weeks and I have watched it a few times uh, on YouTube but I'm actually going to sit down and watch it on my screen here. That's why you see the lighting is kind of a little off because I'm sitting in my living room and uh, got my TV in front of me and you'll be able to see it. I'll pop it up in the corner uh, down here, one of the corners down there when I'm showing, talking about different things. I'm just going to play this thing through and just kind of watch it and comment on what I see and I'll edit it down. Uh, so, but just talking about the packaging here, uh, this is the symphony package, uh, the symphony DVD. This is for the concert that they did. Now this did not have, um, it did not have Ace as a part of it. They actually wanted Ace to be a part of this, but he had left the band. And, uh, you know, this was during that time after, after the reunion tour and then the farewell tour, you know, uh, Peter had left for a little while and Ace was still in the band and Peter got replaced by Eric Singer and he wore the Catman makeup and then this was a point in time where uh, Ace, had came, Ace had left the band and was replaced by Tommy, and Peter came back. Now, contractually, I believe, I've read, that they had to have three original members in order to do this. Now, I don't know if that's true, but uh, from what I've, I have read that somewhere. Uh, but so, yeah, the packaging for this is, uh, it slides out of this case, and this is the back of it. It's got the band members picture there um, this is the front and then it opens up into it looks like this and then it opens on up and it's got two DVDs in here um, and I'll tell you what's on DVD one and what's on DVD two here in just a second and then it's got this little booklet that goes along with it and it just basically has the track listing uh, what's on each DVD and then has pictures on the inside and I think it's funny how much Tommy looks like Ace uh, in that picture. And it looks like I think these are the Destroyer era um, costumes. At least uh, at least Tommy's looks like it is. Um, I'm not sure what Jeans is. Some of you costume buffs out there. I know there's some guys, they know exactly what all the costumes were and when they wore them and everything. And it's just got credits. It's got pictures and credits and stuff like that. This is done with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. And what they did was they did three acts. And this DVD actually has, on the first DVD, it has like all the stuff leading up to uh, the pre-production and all that stuff. Uh, I've not actually watched through all of that yet. I plan on it, but I'm not going to do it tonight. Uh, basically what I'm going to watch through tonight is the three acts of the actual show. And that was, the they came out with Act 1, and they kind of did a normal Kiss show playing songs without any uh, accompaniment at all with, a, with the orchestra. And then they came back for Act 2. Act 2, what they did was they had uh, like an ensemble with them, and they did a few songs that way. And then they come back for Act 3, and they had the full-on orchestra, and they you know, that was Act 3. So that's what I'm going to be watching. Those are the songs I'm going to be watching tonight, Act 1, 2, and 3. And then I will uh, just give reactions on that. So let's go ahead and get started with it. So before I get into the actual watching the video, I want to give a little tidbits about the album like I always do. Uh, this is Kiss Symphony, Alive 4. Uh, it's the fifth or the sixth um, live album, depending on how you want to look at it. Even though the Millennial Concert was shot in 2000, uh, it wasn't released until 2006. So Alive 4 Symphony was released in 2003. Uh, this is their 41st album overall, including studio albums, box sets, compilation. The, the concert was a one-time deal uh, performed in Sydney, Australia with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra um, on uh, February 28, 2003. It was recorded at Marvel Stadium which at the time was called the uh, Telstra Dome, uh, and it's in Melbourne, and it was the arrangements was under the direction of David Campbell, who conducted the orchestra. Uh, it's also the group's first release under Kiss Records and Sanctuary Records, 
And unlike all the albums in the Alive series before this one, this was a symphonic metal album. It was released on July 22, 2003 uh, as a 21-track, two-disc edition, and also on October 7th as a 16-track single disc. They cut songs from all three of the sets and added Kiss covers of the Ramon song, Do You Remember Rock and Roll Radio. This was the last album to include original member Peter Chris and the first to include Tommy Thayer as an official member. Paul had stated leading up to the show that he wanted Ace to be involved, but Ace had already left the band again, so Ace wasn't involved, so that's why Tommy filled in. Peter would leave the band for a final time in 2004, and he would be replaced by Eric Singer as he was during the farewell tour uh, in 2001 and 2002. And this would be the lineup that Kiss has now uh, with Gene, Paul, Eric Singer and Tommy Thayer, and this is lineup they have since then, and they've had the makeup on since then. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with track number one of the kind of live uh, session, Kiss Electric, and we're going to start with Deuce. So let's get started. Kiss Symphony, Act 1. love that line so they're gonna start with deuce and i love deuce deuce is a great song and this is how they used to start their concerts like way back in the day when they first started they started their sets with deuce and uh i don't know man you know they sound really good um you know and that's ninety-five thousand people there so it's kind of when they when they pull back and show some of these shots and you just see a sea of people. It's kind of, you know, it's really awesome. And uh, they sound really good. Uh, this was 16 years ago. Peter looks like he's having fun, you know. Um, he's hitting the drums. I heard that he used triggers, uh, you know, during the reunion tour and the farewell tour, that he used triggers and stuff. Uh, I don't know. But, you know, this is Kiss, you know. I mean, uh, Tommy is playing Ace's licks very well. For you Tommy haters, he sounds really good. Paul's shaking his ass. Gene's thrusting his crotch. Peter's smiling. Uh, and this sounds really good. You know, it's not as good as Alive. Um, you know, I don't, think it, I don't think anything will ever be as good as Alive. But, you know, hell... I would love to hear this. Uh, I'd love to have been here at this show. Uh, they just showed a nun with uh, Gene's makeup on. So that's really cool. Um, first track out of the gate, Deuce. I'm liking it. I'm digging it. Paul coming out with this. How you doing, people? How you doing, people? That's just a bunch of people. I mean, it really is amazing how many people are there. So, song number two, Strutter. Uh, I think Strutter's a great song. And uh, very fitting. They're keeping it classic Kiss, starting this out. And Paul just still sounds good during this time. Voice sounds good. Um, I actually heard that they did very little cleanup on this. And from what I've watched, um, as far as online stuff, and listening to the DV, listening to the CD, driving around for a couple weeks in my car, and then watching this. I have watched this a couple times online. Uh, this is the first time I've watched this DVD on my on my TV here, my big TV in the house. Uh, that's what you're seeing, you know. Here is uh, what I'm watching, and uh, it. Uh, they did very little cleanup. Paul shaking his ass again. The very little cleanup, uh, and it just looks and sounds really good. They rehearsed qu 
quite a bit from what I understand leading up to this. And um, this just sounds good. I mean, I, I know that they cut like Paul's uh, raps down, like his in-between song raps. They cut it down from the uh, DVD to the album because some stuff just doesn't make sense. I think it's after this song maybe. He does this whole, let me see you over here, let me see you over here, let me see you back here. And, you know, some of the stuff that just doesn't pertain so much to you being there and you kind of get lost if you're just listening to it and not seeing it, they cut off the album, which I'm thankful. Um, you know, I actually could have could, could have stood them cutting some of that stuff uh, in, the, in the DVD. Uh, I'm not a Paul hater, but sometimes his banner gets a little to me. Um, and his, if he showboats a little too much, it gets to me. Uh, even though I love Paul. I've been accused of not liking Paul with my lip syncing videos and stuff and attacking Paul and stuff. But I do like Paul. I think he's a great songwriter. He has a one of the very powerful voice or used to have a very powerful voice you know time is you know i mean he's almost 70 now i understand that uh but you know strutter second song good choice i like it i'm digging this video digging it so far so now track three i think this is let me go rock and roll there it is all yeah he's he's doing the he's doing the banter now he's doing the uh let me see you over here let me see you over here. Yeah, they cut a lot of that banner and they cut the the wolf's whistle. The reem meow. They cut that for the uh, CD. Now I freaking, like I said, they're keeping it old school. Third track out of the box, out of the gate. Let me go rock and roll. I freaking love this song. If you're not a fan of let me go rock and roll, especially the live version, there's something wrong with you. Uh, because... It's great, and Tommy freaking nails these, uh, he nails these licks. Love Tommy, hate Tommy. If you love him or hate him, you know, I don't always, I don't exactly approve of him wearing the makeup, but that's not his decision. Um, but at least he's keeping, they're keeping the band going. I mean, you know, I don't know, but you can't deny that he does blast those licks. I like that Paul threw Paul threw his pickup, caught it in his mouth, and then he spits it out here in a second. Yeah, right there. Spits it out. I just love this song. Paul shaking his ass again. I just love this song. Especially when they go into the, uh, where Gene does his little, guitar his little bass solo and then uh tommy comes in with that awesome solo at the end that ace wrote ah oh, she was gonna show us her boobies and they cut it off paul's shaking his ass though paul doing a whole lot of ass shaking i just love that they just jam like this here comes gene's thing I just love how they just jam. It's just a big jam session. Thrust it, Gene. Thrust it. There he goes. <laughs> and Paul's shaking his ass. And Gene thrusting his dick. Just gotta love it. I tell you, man, they sound good. They sound really good. And I love, I love this song and stuff. If they were dicking this song up, I'd be pissed. But they're not. They sound really good. Peter's hitting them drums. Triggers are not. He's got these little clips. I saw them on his toms. And, you know, they mic drums in all kinds of different ways. And, you know, even back 16 years ago, they had mics that was inside of drums, right up on top of drums, under drums. Um, they got these clips, and they look like they could be triggers just to pick up the vibration of the drum of it getting hit. Or it could just be the types of mics that they're using. Because I see mics. I wouldn't think that they would just use mics for props. But I know you can also use a mic as a, pro as a trigger too. Like when it hears a sound come through. 
I don't know. I want to believe that that's Peter. All right. So that's Let Me Go to Rock and Roll. I love it. I think they did a great job. So what's the next song going to be? Well, he talks about having people from New York, Italy, France, Brazil. Brazil. He reminds me of uh, 16 Candles. Y'all ever seen that? Uh, dong. Autom- dong. Where's the automobile? Automobile. <laughs> Brazil. So, Lick It Up. If you've watched my shows, my videos, you know I'm not the biggest fan of Lick It Up. I appreciate the song for what it is, what it did. Um, but to me, there's better songs on that album. Uh, Fits Like a Glove is a good song. Uh, Million to One is probably one of the better songs on that album. Uh you know, uh, All Hell's Breaking Loose is a really good album, a really good song. But, you know, you got your Ford and you got your Chevy people. Ford and Chevy. You've got the people who think that Creatures of the Night is the better album, and you got people who think that Lick It Up is the better album. I'm in the Creatures of the Night camp. I think that Creatures of the Night is the better album. Uh, I just think that Creatures of the Night would have been a whole lot more successful if they'd have taken the make off the makeup off then. And they were actually considering taking the makeup off. Paul wanted to take the makeup off uh, after the elder. Uh, I think he wanted to take the makeup off during the elder too. Uh, but Gene didn't want to take the makeup off just because Gene was Gene was wrapped up in that persona of the demon. And that's who he was and that's who he was known for. And you know, there's a point in time, you know even today, people know, you know, Gene Simmons. Uh, they might, if they know anybody in Kiss, they know Gene Simmons. With and without makeup. And he himself has made himself kind of his own brand. Uh, and branded things and marketed things. Uh, but I think that Creatures of the Night would have been a whole lot more successful album had they taken the makeup off. It was time. You know, people were starting to see the makeup as childish. I think they had took that gimmick as much as they could. Now they have the makeup on. The reason why the makeup works so well now is because now it's the whole nostalgia thing. I think Kiss could still perform without the makeup now even more than ever. And I think that they make good music. And I still think they make good music. I hate that Kiss is not going to make any more new music because I still think they make good music. There's songs I like on Sonic Boom. There's songs I like on Monster. I've not reviewed them yet. I'll be getting to them, uh, but I will be reviewing them. So look it up. I appreciate it for what it did, and I think they do a very good job on here. It's not my favorite song, so that's why I kind of talked all through it and really didn't watch it because it kind of, eh, you know... If I don't hear Lick It Up performed live ever again, I really don't care. You know, I know when I go to see Kiss, if I go, if I decide to go, there's that nun. There's that nun. Hold on, let's see what he's going to do next. Next is uh, Calling Dr. Love. The rock and roll pneumonia. There are songs that I know that I'm going to hear that I don't, I don't really care to hear. I don't really care to hear Lick It Up. I don't really care to hear Love Gun. You know, there's just certain songs... I don't care if I have heard ever again live. But now Dr. Love. Talking about Dr. Love that they're playing here. I love Dr. Love. I've liked it from the studio album. I loved it on Kiss Alive 2. To me, there will never be another recording of Dr. Love better than the version that is on Kiss Alive 2. It is the iconic version. There's so much energy. There's so much power to that version of that song and this is a good version too here most of these songs i'm going to tell you most of these songs on this are really good versions they did very well but some of them i'm just not fans of because i'm not fans of the song itself but dr love sounds really good gene sounds really good his voice sounds great and they do a good job on dr love i like it all right so what's next uh Last song, I believe, is Psycho Circus. 
There he goes again. So yeah, so Psycho Circus. I love Psycho Circus. I think it's a great song. It's kind of surprising to see it included on this, but at the same time, not. It's probably the most modern of the songs. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is the newest song uh, that they played because it had just come out in between the reunion and the uh, farewell tour. So this song at this time was only a couple years old, if that. Maybe one or two years old. And for it to get the crowd response it got shows you that back then when Kiss put out new music, people responded to it. Um, and I think people responded to Sonic Boom whenever it came out several years ago as a Walmart exclusive. I think people responded well to it. I think people responded well to Monster when it came out. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they had their, they've got their beefs with Tommy and Eric wearing the, the Catman and the Spaceman, you know, wearing Ace and Peter's makeup. But if you just put that aside and listen to the music, listen with your ears rather than listening to your, with, with your eyes, they actually are some very good songs on those albums. So Psycho Circus on here, I think it's a very good version. As good as it can be, Psycho Circus is one of those songs that it doesn't play out well live, especially when they get to that part where it kind of calms down. He's like, I, I've been waiting here to be your guide. You know, it's, it just kind of seems kind of weird. It's a song that starts off really strong and then it just kind of falls off as it goes along. For me, it seems. The solo's good. Uh, Tommy does a really good solo. Tommy may have actually played the solo on the album. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, yeah. Tommy had kind of been, you know, in and out of the band a little bit, uh, you know, on the background, on the back scene. So, yeah, it's a good version. Uh, you know, as good as Psycho Circus can be live, it's a good version. Now, as they finish up Psycho Circus, they're going to take a break. And they're going to come back with the Melbourne Symphony Ensemble. They're going to do an acoustic set here. The first set was really good. I think basically what I noticed is the changes and the differences is they did some cleanup but they don't do a whole lot uh they mostly just cut out a lot of paul's raps uh which you know like i said isn't entirely a bad thing um so they come back act two they're coming in with uh peter and he's gonna be singing beth and i just i mean that moment right there where he comes out and he just kind of does that. And you hear the crowd just kind of, they're behind him so much. And he says there, you know, this is cool. Uh, I think it's cool that uh, the orchestra members are in makeup as well. And, um, you know, David Campbell's in makeup. And he comes out and he just sings Beth and he just does a fantastic job. Um, to be the age he is at this time, you know, like I said, this was 16 years ago. But check that out. The little girl singing the words. Uh, they show another little girl here in a minute dressed as Peter. I think she's there with the girl dressed as Ace. Um, and uh, she's singing, singing the words too. So young. Um, but I just love they got that. They got the oboe there. They got the clarinet there. Uh, this is the first time that you got to think about this. He's performing this with a live ensemble behind him. French horn. I love a French horn. And there's the little girl with the, with the Peter makeup. And, you know, this is just a good version of this song. Now, I'm not the biggest Beth fan. As you guys know, if you've watched me enough, um, I appreciate the song for what it did uh, for Kiss. I mean, it skyrocketed them, uh, and it is a huge song for them. Look, when he saw them, they just kind of that just that just touches my heart. Um, but the musical interlude right here is just so good. I mean, it's probably one of my favorite parts of this show. Um, and the cool thing about the ensemble is 
uh, like I said, all the orchestra members have makeup on. And I saw in a video where they showed they had a crew that basically um, spray painted their, airbrushed their faces white, and then they had stencils where they, you know, put the makeup on them. And uh, it was almost like an assembly line. It was really cool. But I love this version of Beth. It's probably... I think it probably beats the Alive 2 version to me. Even though Peter sings better on Alive 2, uh, you know, because it was from the 70s. I just love him having that live band, that live ensemble behind him. I think it's really cool. So now they're going to come out and they're going to do Forever. Paul's going to talk here a little bit, talk about, you know, how there was other places they could have done this and they wanted to do it. They they felt right doing it with uh, with Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. They introduced David Campbell there and then they play forever. And honestly, it is very fitting uh, with the ensemble behind them. It's very fitting. It's a very good song it's a very good version uh tommy does a really good version of the solo on the acoustic and i just always wonder it's at this point in the show i always wonder why is it that ace didn't get involved why was it money uh was it um contractual uh was it the legal? Did did lawyers get in the way? Um, did he not want to play solos on acoustic? Because we know that uh, Ace doesn't like playing songs on acoustic. Uh, he doesn't like doing acoustic solos. Uh, you know, and this was just a one-off show, so I don't understand why Ace couldn't have been involved in it. Uh, why he wouldn't have wanted to be involved in it. So... But as far as this, I think Forever is really good. I think it's really good on here. And uh, I like Forever, and I like this version of it. So they're done with Forever, and uh, now they're moving on to uh, Going Blind. Paul does a little banner here. And he's like, how many people on The Elder? And he gets this huge, that look on his face, you know. And we all own The Elder, Paul. We all do. We love The Elder. So they're going to do Going Blind. I think they could have done a little more songs off The Elder. I think they really missed an opportunity. But they're going to do Going Blind, which we know Going Blind was made popular from whenever they did The Unplugged. And uh, this is a really good version of it. And uh, it's kind of unique having the ensemble behind it. fits really well. And I've always liked Going Blind. I like it off of Higher Than Hell. I liked it on Unplugged. And I like it on this version, too. It's really good. Gene sounds really good. They all sound really good. Tommy does really good acoustic solos on it. And they all just sound really good. I'll tell you what, I'll let you stay with me while I do this next little thing. So, you can stay with me here for just a second. You get a little sneak preview. And now they're getting ready to go into their next song during the symphonic orchestra uh, ensemble part. And they're going to be doing Sure Know Something. Sure Know Something is one of those songs that it doesn't seem like it should fit with uh, an ensemble behind it. But it certainly does. And I love Sure Know Something. It's one of my favorite songs off of Dynasty. Dynasty, I think, is a great album. I've reviewed it. If you want to go back and check out my review, I've already reviewed Dynasty. Uh, it's not a disco album. Don't let one disco song turn it into a disco album. It's not a disco album. But... Um, I love Sure Know Something. I think this is a great version of Sure Know Something with the ensemble behind them. I uh, think it's really cool. And so I think it's a great version, and I like it. So he comes out of uh, Sure Know Something and starts talking about if you're here with someone you're not supposed to be here with, you might want to leave because we're filming this. I think that's kind of funny. Peter gets a laugh out of it. That's kind of cool. He starts talking about everybody coming back. He kind of gets choked up a little bit. And then the next song, Shandy. And I mean, yes, of course they know it. They they did a, whenever they came out with Unmasked, they couldn't even hardly tour in the States. I don't even think they toured in the States with uh, Unmasked. They only toured... Uh, everywhere else 
excuse me, and they were selling out like crazy in Australia. Australians loved Kiss during this time. And uh, I liked Unmasked. Even when I was a kid, when it came out, I liked Unmasked. And I've always liked Shandy. Shandy's probably my favorite song off of Unmasked. Ace has some really good songs on there. Two Sides of the Coin, Torpedo Girl, uh, Talk to Me. It's got some really good songs on there. Uh, it did get that Vinnie Poncha polish much more than Dynasty did. <coughs> and I think it's really cool that they did um, Sure Knows Something from Dynasty and then Shandy from Unmasked. Two songs right there. And uh, it goes great with the uh, symphonic orchestra. Sounds really good. It's cool to hear it live. And uh, man, it just sounds really good. So then they get done with Act 2. And they're getting ready to come back with the third act that's going to have the full orchestra. Now, Detroit Rock City, everybody knows it's my favorite Kiss song. I've loved it ever since the moment I heard it when I was a kid, seven years old. And um, this sounds really awesome. I love the way that the full orchestra backs them and they just accentuate things and they give a thickness and a body to, you know, like whenever they whenever they're doing da na 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 whenever they're doing things they're back they're back there going like da 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 I mean they're doing some really cool things. I like how they keep showing the first and second chair for the violin. One is dressed as Jean, and one is dressed as Paul. It's like some of the symphonic members, even in the symphony. They keep showing. And I love how they have, uh, if you look at the percussion, they've got timpani back there. They've got a big symphonic bass drum back there to help just kind of act, accentuate things. That whole thing there where they're holding that. Da -da 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 I love that. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, it's like a, it's almost kind of like a play on what Gene does on the bass, like, da -da -da -da, and they do those long sweeping notes. Like I said, I love it. I think it's great. I think it's just amazing. Guy doing the cymbals. I mean, it's just, they've got that full orchestra. Now, I like how during his solo, they're just doing the little staccato notes, the dun, 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 dun. Just kind of keeping the time. The guy's hitting the timpani. The guy's hitting the cymbals. Doing the, doing the symphonic bass. It's just really cool. Some of these fans, man, they trip me out. Okay, so they're finishing up with uh, Detroit Rock City. And they're going to go into, of course, King of the Nighttime World. As they should go into King of the Nighttime World. King of the Nighttime World is one of those songs to me. It's like you, you know, it's like we're the champions and we will rock you. You know, you almost have to have the two of them together. Um, I like these. I like it's like the girls, they're lifting up their shirts and they're not showing their boobs. They're showing their bras. It's like, okay, this is family friendly. You know, this lift your shirts up, but, you know, don't show your boobs um, uncovered at least. Uh but King of the Nighttime World, it sounds really good here. Like I said, it's, it sounds good with a band, with an orchestra behind it. And I love, I love how they kept the live for versions. So far, they've kept them kind of uh, electric. Uh, they've kept them uh, kind of old school. You know, the first, uh, you know, they did, you know, lick it up and stuff like that, Psycho Circus. They basically played a lot of old school stuff too. So so far they've came in with two you know, songs off of Destroyer. Uh, so it's really good. 
So they finished up a King of the Nighttime World, and they keep it old school. As a matter of fact, they keep it off. It's still coming off Destroyer. So they're good for track three, they're going to play Do You Love Me. Paul does his little banter, and like I said, they cut the banter and the, and the rapping down for the CD. Paul's taking his shirt off. Yeah, so Do You Love Me. Great song. A lot of people don't like Do You Love Me. Um, I've heard several people uh, in reviews saying that they don't like Do You Love Me. But I personally, I like Do You Love Me. And uh, this is a good version here. Uh, I think Do You Love Me should have been on uh, Kiss Alive 2. But can't always get what you want. I think Take Me should have been on, should have been on Kiss Alive 2 also. But, you know, then we have those five studio tracks at the end. And some of those I like better than others. There's some I could have done without. There's some that I like, like Rocket Ride, All-American Man. This is a song that just really seems to fit really well with the orchestra behind it. Almost any song off of Destroyer would fit with orchestra behind it. And they do quite a bit of songs off of Destroyer. Uh, let's see, they do Detroit Rock City, King of the Nighttime World, Do You Love Me, Shout It Out Loud, God of Thunder, uh, Great Expectations. I mean, my God. Think about that. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of... Beth. They did Beth. Dang, did they do the whole album all except for Flaming Youth? So what's the next track? The next track is uh, Shout It Out Loud. I think Shout It Out Loud is a great song. I actually like Shout It Out Loud uh, probably better. I just... I got, I got dumbfounded by that... That, that the orchestra was doing. I just kind of got shocked there for a second. I think that this is a great version of this song and it, it fits really well with the symphony behind it but yeah let me let me look up on my phone let me check this out kiss destroyer see off the of destroyer on this concert they do detroit rock city they do king of the nighttime world they do god of thunder they do great expectations they don't do flaming youth they don't do sweet pain they do shout it out loud they do beth and they do Do You Love Me. So they do seven songs off of Destroyer. That's pretty cool. But other than other than The Elder, it is probably the most symphonic type of album. And who produced both of those albums? That's right, Bob Ezrin. So they're wrapping up Shout It Out Loud, and I think the next thing that we're going to see here is going here, here is going to be God of Thunder. So Gene's going to have his whole blood thing that he's going to do. So I'll probably just sit and watch this, maybe, maybe show a little bit of it and cut through part of it. I heard that Gene was supposed to breathe fire after one of these songs, and he forgot to. Now that's what I read. So once Gene... You know, bleeds all of his blood and floats up to the top of the stage. So we get finally get into, you know, the swing of God of Thunder. And God of Thunder is one of those songs, once again, off of the Destroyer album, that was made to have an orchestra of this size behind it. It's just such a brooding and dark song that the orchestra behind it just sets it off in the most amazing way. It takes the creepiness. There's some chords that they hit, and it takes the creepiness of the song that is God of Thunder and just takes it up to another level behind some of the things that Gene is doing and that the rest of the band is doing. And it helps accent whenever he does the God of Thunder, and it goes dun-dun. That whole little segment there that it does is just a very kind of a punchy, in-your-face type of sound. And it just the, the orchestra just fits this song perfectly. And so it's one of the really good songs off the album. Now after they finish with God of Thunder, they go, Paul does a little segment where he talks about how the stadium is so big with 95,000 people there 
that he wants to come back. He wants to go back to sea. So this is what they've been doing with Love Gun for a while, and they still do it to this day, to the on the tours today. He gets on this basically zip line and zip lines out to a stage in the middle of the crowd and then performs Love Gun from there. And uh, it's a really cool thing that he's done. It puts him close to the crowd. So, uh, so then they do Love Gun. And Love Gun's a good version. Like I said, if you've watched me very often, you know that Love Gun is not a song that I very much care for. Uh, to me, there's a lot better songs on the Love Gun album than Love Gun. The, but they don't get played nowhere near as much, but Love Gun is the hit. And uh, it's a song that Paul has himself said that it's his favorite Kiss song. Uh, other than Firehouse, I think, it's one of his favorite Kiss songs. So Paul's going to play Love Gun till the day he dies. But this is a really good version. They do really good. And the, and the orchestra backing them, just like any song, it just enhances it and gives it an extra fullness of body to it. I really like how basically through this whole song, the band, the orchestra was just like doing a da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da. They were basically doing it through the whole thing, keeping that that machine gun, you know, rhythm going. And like I said, it's Love Gun. It's a, you know, it's a good version. So after they get done with Love Gun, they move on to Black Diamond. And, uh, you know... Black Diamond is one of those songs. It's just, I love Black Diamond. I love it. And they do an amazing job on this one. And the orchestra just sets this song off. The song, it has that ending to it that I love. It doesn't have the -na 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 ending to it. It ends old school, and uh, I just love it. This song is just, ugh. and just to hear, you, we, we get to hear Peter sing, and Peter just sounds great. Um, it would have been nice to have Peter get more songs, you know, like Nothing to Lose or something like that, but, you know, oh well. But this song sounds so good. When the orchestra, when they start, and they dun, 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 come in, it's just awesome. Now, I'm a big fan of this song, this version of this song. I'm a big fan of this song anyway, but I'm a big fan of this version of the song. This is the part I love the most. They start raising Peter up. I always like this end part of this. And I know Tommy's ripping off, you know, Ace's move there, getting on his knees and everything, but it's just part of the show. I love how they're raising Peter up and got the smoke coming out of the bottom. It's very old school. Got the pyro going. I love how the orchestra holds that note and then they start going bum, 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 bum. They start climbing. At that point in time, they're just like, play anything. Just hit every dang string and every key on your instrument so black diamond ends the uh ends the the show uh but you know they're going to come back for uh they're going to do encores so then they bring the australian children's choir out and then they're going to drop back and to another song off of destroyer and they're going to do great expectations and i just thought this was really cool that they did Great Expectations because although it's not a song that a lot of KISS fans really care for, um, you know, and I'm not the biggest fan of it, uh, but I real on the album. But I think this is really good. If you're going to put a, um, if you're going to put a song on a symphonic album, I think that you had to include Great Expectations because of the children's choir and because of the uh the symph the symphony that it's behind it um on on the album so i think this fits perfectly 
you know, Paul goes back to an elect uh, to an acoustic, and uh, I just think it's a great version of the song. As much as I like, you know, as I like this song as much as I can like it, but I think this version is a great version. I love when they show the young fans that have on the Kiss makeup and when they sing song when they're singing along to the songs. I noticed the little girl wasn't singing along on that time because she might not know this song. This is a deep this is a deep cut. Um, she probably never heard this song. But I like how Gene changed the lyrics to what they were originally supposed to be. You know, he says, you watch me beating my drum. You know, he says, you watch Pete playing his drums. You watch Paul playing guitar. And that was the original lyrics. It was supposed to be talking about the band, you know, and talking about uh, them as individuals. Rather than, and then it got changed to all about me, 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 you know, and everything. And that was a Bob Ezrin thing. Ezrin suggested that change. Look at Gene messing with the kid. That's cool. Paul getting down in front of them. They sound really good. The children's choir sounds really good. But I think it's a good version of the song. So I think that the last, the next to last song they're going to do is, if my track listing is right, and it is a little mixed up. From the CD, they do throw the track listing off a little bit. Um, but I think the next song is uh, I Was Made For Loving You. It's really weird that they did I Was Made For Loving You live with on this, on this particular concert. Maybe that's why they did it. He said, this is a song we always play when we come to Australia. You made it a big, big hit. I love I Was Made For Loving You. Uh, some people hate it. You know, they call it the disco song. But like I said, I'm a big fan of Dynasty. There's very few songs on Dynasty that I don't like um, or that I'm not really big fans of. I actually like I Was Made For Loving You a lot. I don't think it's a disco song. It has that 100 beat to it, uh, the four on the floor 100 beat. And Paul was going to Studio 54 a lot at the time and was really trying to, he was trying to write kind of a disco song, him and Benny Poncia. I'm not the biggest fan of it live. Uh, this is another one of those songs I really don't care to hear live. I know they're doing it on the End of the Road tour. And um, I really don't care to hear this song live, along with Lick It Up and Love Gun. I really don't care to hear them. And uh, wish they'd replace them. But I think it's another one of Paul's favorite songs. They have a tendency to do it a lot. As far as the version on here, um, I think that the Melbourne uh, Orchestra, they just do a great job. They add that depth to it. Like I said, I keep saying that, but they do. They add that depth, that third and fourth and fifth layer and sixth layer to the song um, that just kind of gives your ears something extra to listen to. And I think they do a really good job of this. Although I'm not a biggest a big fan of this song played live, uh, I think it does really good on here. They do those little short orchestra. Da -da -da, they do a lot of little short orchestra hits and punches on it. That kind of was happened a lot back in the 70s. If you listen to some of the 70s songs, they had an orchestra in them and they'd do punches, you know, and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I think it worked out. I think the orchestra does really good during the whole little musical interlude where Paul's saying, I can't get enough. And it goes into the little interlude that goes in before the solo. I think the orchestra carries it and shines so much during that part of the song. I actually enjoy listening to this song, this version of it, just because of the orchestra. Um, it's probably my favorite live version of I Was Made For Loving You. The other live versions that I've heard, I don't really care for. But I really do like this live version of I Was Made For Loving You just because of the orchestra. So they get done with I Was Made For Loving You and they're going to move on to the last song of the show, Rock and Roll All Night, Party Every Day. That's just, that's a sea of people, man. That's just crazy. Yeah, so Rock and Roll All Night, Party Every Day. You know, they start blowing the confetti, and, you know, it's how they end shows. Even to this day, they end shows this way. Uh, 
You know, this is another one of those songs that I I love rock and roll all night. Uh, it's it's very played out, um, but it's I mean it's the song that Kiss is known for. I mean, you know, it's the song everybody knows, and uh, thank God for it. You know, I mean, it's a song that they wrote to be the anthem that it is. It was made to be the anthem that it is. The orchestra sounds good behind it. It gives it that whole, it almost sounds like a patriotic song with the orchestra feels that they have going on behind it. It makes the song sound very patriotic. It's America. America. You know, as they say here in the South, America. So while this is finishing up, uh, what's my final thoughts on the album and uh, on the uh, DVD? Um, I love it. Um, I know a lot of people didn't care for this and they thought it was stupid that Kiss did it, you know. Um, but I think that Kiss playing in front of a symphon- and symphonic orchestra of that size and playing in a arena, a stadium of 95,000, I think it's just it's something that should have happened, and I'm glad that it did happen. I love the DVD. Um, I love the songs. It was a cool opportunity for the orchestra. I mean, they got to be rock stars for one night. I mean, they got to share a stage with Kiss. I just think that's awesome, and they were good sports, you know, putting the makeup on, and uh, I watched some of the the videos where it was uh, after the fact, and... Uh, the orchestra really loved being a part of the show. They really enjoyed it. They really had a good time. I actually enjoy watching the video more than I do listening to it because I like having the visuals of the orchestra along because you hear with your eyes and kind of your ears at the same time. But whenever they're, but I really enjoyed jamming this out in my car over the last couple of weeks getting ready for this review. And this review reaction uh, to the video and everything. I've really enjoyed it. And uh, I think this is a great video. I'd like to know what you guys think. Um, put down in the comments uh, what you think about this. What you think about the video. If you've seen the video. If, you've own, if you own the DVD. Let me know if you own the DVD. Uh, if you have seen this. Or if you've heard it. If you own the album. Uh, you know, let me know what you think. Be sure to uh, check out the videos that I've done in the past. I'm Brant within my head channel. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, guys. And uh, I know these videos get a little long, but I appreciate you hanging out with me and watching. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Looking for some satisfaction. Mundane little life A little turbo reaction Just sustain my mind